So now that we've established the basics behind chemical reactions, we can continue our discussion on chemical reactions by entitling this next flowchart Chemical Reactions 2. So chemical RxNs, chemical reactions, Roman numeral 2. In this flowchart, we're going to be labeling out two very basic ideas, two ideas central and absolutely essential to understanding metabolism because they are processes and reactions that are going to occur throughout life. These two things are going to be considered and called exergonic reactions and its opposite, which would be considered endergonic reactions. Two opposite sides of a coin, two opposite sides of a spectrum in terms of metabolic energy and overall outcomes of metabolism. We can consider exergonic energy as the idea of literally energy going outward because we have this prefix of ex or exo meaning outside and then endo or ender, what do you think that means? That means energy inward. And now you should be starting to think back to our previous video in which we stated that a system will either release energy or it will require energy. And start thinking about which one of these, exergonic or endergonic, fulfills those two qualities. We'll get to that in just a second. So first off, exergonic reactions or energy outward reactions are reactions that involve reactants and these reactants, we can say, have, and we'll put this in big capital letters, more, remember that, more potential energy than products. The reactions have more potential energy than products. The overall goal or the overall outcome, excuse me, of this is that, and we have to absolutely remember this, is that energy is, I'm going to write this in big letters, released. What is it released from? Whatever system that we're talking about. And in most situations for metabolism, specific, specifically, excuse me, in biology, energy is released through chemical reactions in cells, through cellular processes. So now that we've established that the reactants have more potential energy than the products, this causes energy to be released, we can talk about it in terms of G or delta G. So let's look at that. In this situation of energy going outward, the total G, remember G stands for free energy, in final state, because remember we have to talk about delta G, in final state is lower, lower than G initial. The initial G that, oh, let me just write that over, the initial G that was seen uh, before the reaction actually went to completion. Once the reaction has completed, we notice that the final G, the final free energy, is lower than the initial. You know what that means? What the end all goal of that is? What the end all outcome of that is? Is that delta G is equal and always equal to in this exergonic energy outward reactants having more potential energy than product. Total G and final state lower than G initial. Delta G overall have to remember this is going to be a negative number it will be a negative number. And if it is a negative number, we imagine and we understand that this system will undergo a loss of energy. And that energy will be lost outward. That energy will be released. That energy will go towards and out towards the environment. So remember how we said metabolism is twofold. There are two arms of metabolism. We remember them as anabolic and catabolic. Anabolism, catabolism. On this side of the, let's say, chemical reaction equation of exergonic reactions, catabolic reactions falls in the metabolic, let's say, state of exergonic reactions. Catabolic reactions are all exergonic. Catabolic reactions are all exergonic. In this situation, let's just remind ourselves, we are going from complex to simple. And when we are going from complex molecules to simple molecules, you know what the byproduct of this event is? When we eat food, when we eat food and we break it down into simpler components, not only do we break it down into simpler components, but what else happens? We release energy. We lose energy. Energy is given off in the form of heat. Heat. 
we have complex going to simple, but simple will also be right next to and right with the release of heat. The release of heat means the release of energy. Point proven right there. So overall, from this sort of concept, we can state that lots of potential energy um, is going to be seen in complex molecules, and that potential energy, the lots of potential energy in complex molecules, will turn into kinetic energy that the cell can utilize, um, and then we can also give off heat in that situation. And then finally, our overall theme, the overall theme of exergonic reactions. If there's one thing you walk away with when you learn about exergonic reactions, understand that these are absolutely spontaneous reactions. These are favorable reactions. These are reactions that the cell wants and enjoys because the delta G is what is negative. That is the story of exergonic reactions. Now let's look at the story of endergonic reactions. Endergonic reactions are a little bit different. They are the exact opposite. Um, I've run out of space a little bit here, so of course I'm going to have to squeeze like always, so just bear with me. Here, we're going to state that the reactants have more potential energy than products. No, we're obviously going to say the opposite. So over here, we'll just say, um, just to save room, less PE. And you can fill this in on your own. Reactants have less PE than products. I'm just going to write this to save space. Less potential energy, but you get the idea. And then over here, we stated that total G in final state is lower than G initial. Now we're actually going to say, let's say, total G final is higher. We'll say higher because it's just the exact opposite. That's all it is, the exact opposite. In addition, what we're going to say here is that this process of energy going inward. Energy going inward into what? That means it's going inward into the system. We have to put energy into the system. So guess what? Let's write that down. This process requires energy. It absolutely needs energy input. Requires an energy input to proceed. It does not happen for a better, uh, for just a basic phrase, does not happen spontaneously, does not happen favorably. So what do you have to do? You have to push it a little bit. You have to require some energy to push this reaction forward. And the exact process in terms of metabolism is the opposite of catabolism. What is catabolic, what is the opposite of catabolic reactions? Of course, anabolic reactions. And anabolic reactions involve what? Remember, anabolic steroids, they help you build strong muscles, right? It's all about building, it's all about building, and then it's all about, of course, then the good term we can use here is synthesis. It's all about synthesis. And this idea, what we do is, we go from simple all the way to complex, but I want you to notice something. I left a little space here for a reason. What do you think I'm going to have to input? What do you think I'm going to have to put into this side of the equation? This is an endergonic reaction. It requires energy inward. It requires energy to proceed. So I'm going to put plus E. Simple molecules plus energy through many biological processes, biological systems, will create complex anabolic synthetic, uh, let's say, molecules at the end all be all state. Overall, one more thing I just want to drive home here. Since we stated that delta G is a negative number in this situation, we're going to say delta G is equal to positive. I'm just going to put a number sign. That is not a hashtag. That is a number sign in this situation. So delta G is equal to a positive number. This means that we have a gain of energy in this system. So then I'm going to give you one final thought about endergonic reactions. These guys are not spontaneous. They are not favorable. They are positive delta G. So we have exergonic reactions with energy outward. This is proven and defined through these steps right here. And endergonic reactions, which is energy inward, which is proven and defined through these steps right here. And that goes overall, explains chemical reactions too. And then we'll continue our study of these specifically, endergonic reactions, and sort of why they're there. What's the purpose of them if they require energy and how do they even happen? If they have all this sort of not spontaneous, not favorable characteristics, we'll look at those questions in our next video.